Hey friends, I want to welcome my friend and guest, Matt Meadows. And so Matt, he recently just stepped out. He's in full-time ministry. He works as an evangelist. I'm going to let him communicate and share what that means and what that is and why. But today he is on our show and I want you all to be able to hear from him and his heart and how he got from really attending church and just following Jesus to now like being on mission and what we can learn from him and that experience. So Matt, um, what what is an evangelist? Like, what does that mean when I when I say that word to an audience? Like, can you describe that? Yeah, um, evangelist uh, definition means a proclaimer of the good news, um, but biblically, it's actually much more than that. So, an evangelist is somebody who equips the church. If you remember in Ephesians chapter four, it talks about how, how um, Christ has given gifts to men, some apostles, prophets, um, evangelists, pastors, and teachers uh, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So uh, the primary purpose, I believe, for an evangelist or for any body that's called into the fivefold is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, to equip the church, to build them up. And as an evangelist, um, that looks like me... Uh, or us who are evangelists, training those who are in the church to be able to share their faith properly, um, to encourage them to share their faith, to, to encourage them to let them know that this life isn't just to uh, be lived for ourselves, but to be lived for Christ and to be lived for the people around us, that they might know Christ. And so for me, that's what an evangelist looks like. It looks like equipping the church and it looks like preaching the gospel uh, to the lost. Awesome. Awesome. Now, what does that practically look like? Like, what is the day-to-day? -day? What are the, the things that you, it may not be day-to-day -day right yeah. now because there's there's admin. If you're called in the ministry, you're doing admin. Yeah. But like, <laughs> like what, what what does that practically look like? Like, how do you, how do you, how do you practice that? Yeah. Um, for everybody, it probably looks a little bit different. Um, unfortunately, there is a lot of admin, <laughs> more admin than, than I We'll explain that in a prefer. minute. Prefer. But... <laughs> um, you know, basically just getting things in order, reaching out to people, making phone calls. Logistics. Building logistics, building yeah. networks. Like, um, if you could be a wedding planner and a coordinator, <laughs> you would be an amazing asset to Absolutely. any ministry team, especially if you're doing events outside church. Absolutely. If you have any type of... Uh, gifting or capability of organizing and planning. Yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> you can you can be used for the kingdom work because there's a lot of it um, that happens. But uh, for me, I just started out um, a few months back. The Lord opened the door for me to go into full time ministry, and for me, it's been building. Right now, I'm of course going out and sharing the gospel. Um, we're going out every Friday and uh, just hitting the streets and, and sharing the gospel with people. We're planning events, so we're planning outdoor events where we will worship outdoors and, and call people to come and, and where we promote and then we preach the gospel and, and pray for people and uh, just call, call them to repentance, call them to salvation, call them to, to the feet of Jesus. And so we're doing all of that right now, but um, the logistics part probably is in planning is more more than the actual ministry part and ministering and, and, and preaching and uh, that just looks like building network and, and connecting with people and yeah um, and yeah. so yeah no, that's, that's real life like <laughs> yeah, real life you know we, yeah. you, you come to church on Sunday yeah. but like most of the week for most churches and staffs yeah. are you know preparing for yeah. Sunday it's it's not and what then, you just see on YouTube or <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, videos. like the the awesome momentous evangelist <laughs> yeah. stuff that you see like yeah. so much planning so went much. into that which is you yeah. know this is the whole other side that you don't get to see an experience absolutely um, Absolutely. you know, team building, preparing, planning, you got to study, you want to be in prayer and then you want to make sure that you have permits if you're yeah. going to, you know, be on public property, like yeah. all of it. Right. Yeah. And, and I'll say this too, um, something for those who want to go into ministry or who just look at ministry as like, Oh, they just do that. Like one, a Sunday or they just do that once a weekend or something like that. Like there is a lot of pressure, <laughs> like just spiritually and emotionally, there's a lot of pressure because you want to, you want to be faithful to God and you want to fulfill what you're called to do. And so the pressure and the weight of it, I know for me, uh, within these first you know couple months has been, has been heavy and has been extreme of just 
you know, ask, telling God, like, hey, God, I want to be faithful. I want to walk in what you've called me to. I want to do what you're calling me to do. I don't want to do it my way. I don't want to do it other people's way. I want to do it your way. And just, you know, that feeling that, that weight and that responsibility and that pressure, it's heavy. So yeah. if you're, uh, if you want to be in ministry, just, you know, remember. It's, it's work. It, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's yeah. a labor side of it. Absolutely. It's worth it. It's definitely you worth know. it. Um, and, and I think like, you know, if, if planning and logistics and team building isn't your thing, like you can definitely go out like you guys have done and just mm -hmm. like, Hey, Friday nights, we're going to go downtown. Yeah. Right. Like that's yeah. minimal in terms of all the coordinating and planning and logistics. Absolutely. But then when we get into things like, like events, mm -hmm. like you, you want to have, if you want 50 people or a hundred people or however many people you want to come out to hear the gospel, yeah. you know, then it's a whole nother level of logistics, getting that to happen, set yeah. up and. Yep. Um, with, Promoting with it all. and all everything. Yeah, yeah, you know, and we've done different events at our church. We we call them outreaches at our church, um, you know, and and maybe other places call them crusades or campaigns or yeah. revivals. There's a lot of different terminology yeah. out there yeah. in church world, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. like we did the Mayfield Community Outreach. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've done street church. Yeah. You know, and you've got other events in the works, and we're we're praying about some things that we could do outside of our area now. Definitely. Absolutely. But I, I want to shift a little bit to the like, how did you how did you get here? Um, and and one of the things that I would want to point out is like so many people that I'm going to be featuring. Um, I love to find people that don't have a background in, in academia. Yeah. Um, like so you don't have like like a ton of time spent in Bible school. No. You, you've done Bible classes. Yeah. You've done yeah. different things over yeah. the years to continue to grow. And I'm 100 percent into like like continue to grow get educated, get informed, but don't, don't disqualify yourself because you don't feel like you have enough education to ministry. If God's Absolutely. calling you and I believe he is like, you can start right now. Yeah. Um, you know, so trust me on that. And so, yeah. um, I know that's part of your story. So yeah, yeah, can yeah. you share, can you expound a little bit from like, like you gave your life to Jesus, you're attending yeah. church to like, now you're in full-time ministry, leading teams, planning, outreaches to share the gospel to the lost like how did mm -hmm. you go from a to b a little bit um if i may really quick just to, to pick up on something you said about the academia part it so this this right here and i'm not knocking schools colleges classes or anything they're they're great and they're good but this is this is what you need like this is everything else is supplemental to your um to the the word of god and, and getting into the word yourself. So I would say it all starts there ultimately is, is getting into the word yourself, hungering and thirsting for God and his word and, and wanting to grow and learn um, personally with him. You know, the Holy Spirit is our teacher and he'll teach you. Yeah. And, you know, those Bible classes, those schools, they're great. And if God is leading you to do them, do them. But don't, uh, don't rely on them. And like, and for example... If you're going through school and you're going through classes and you're reading um, the books within your school or classes more than you're reading the Bible, that is that is a, a sign that you know your priorities are backwards. Yeah, I mean, so. I mean Jesus is like, hey, apart from me, you can do nothing. Yeah. Abide in me, and yeah. and abiding in Him is so much more than like getting into books and yeah. study. It's it's a relationship piece, and absolutely, I think I think one of the like cornerstones into that is is like just intimate prayer yeah. with him intimate time in his word to like know him and, yeah. and walk with him yeah. um you know and i i find that like oftentimes people feel like well i'm not i don't know enough or i'm not prepared enough so we, we they they miss this big window where they could already be doing the ministry god's called them to they could yeah. already be making disciples they could already be leading groups they could mm -hmm. already be doing outreaches because they feel like they need to know more yeah um and then yet like once you know more you still feel unprepared still feel and unprepared. one of the reasons why is like discipleship ministry <laughs> evangelism it's just hard yeah and and we don't really talk about the challenges the obstacles like like everybody faces fear mm -hmm. because being rejected sucks yeah. and being made fun of sucks when you're on the street trying to yeah. share about jesus yeah you know and and yeah. all of that and so the best way to start is like go, go, and then as you find areas where you need help and you need supplemental, like yeah. like take those courses, take those classes. Yeah. But but on the go training, like apprenticeship style, mm -hmm. um, that is absolutely, in my opinion, the way to go. 
and uh-huh. then get further resourced as you're already going because yeah. now you're not going to be wasting your time. You know exactly what it is you need to learn to yeah. do. The assignment God's given you even better. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not no, supposed no, to be. No, you're this, good. Yeah, you're so good. Um, go ahead, man. Yeah. Share. <laughs> well, you'll 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 grow as you go. So, yeah. I mean, and and I and I'll say that. Too. And I just I've seen this in your life, and I'm yeah. passionate about it because I think yeah. I think so many more people like. Like they're waiting on the sidelines, mm-hmm. and and they need to hear this message. Yeah, and I, I want to be careful because I don't want to I don't want to discredit or knock anything. Yeah, and and because they are they are good and they are helpful, um, but I, but I will say sometimes we get we, we get consumeristic, and and we begin to you know the Bible talks about how head knowledge it puffs up, and sometimes we gain so much head knowledge and we we can quote so many scriptures. But we can't live them out. We can't act them out. We can't put them into into action. Or we get so consumeristic where we want to grow and grow and grow in our knowledge that we never actually go um, and make disciples and do what God has called us to do. And so there has to be there has to be that that balance. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, there's, and, there's a healthy balance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So okay, from from like where you started till yeah, now. Sorry. Like I know, man. You're you're good. This is this is a good, I, I think, lane to run in for a little bit, uh, and something I I've, I've been looking forward to talking about. And so, um, yeah. Tell us though, like how did how did you like how did you get here now? A little bit of that process, because yeah. for some people, it's like that leap just feels crazy. Um, how did you do that? And then let we'll, we'll after you share a little bit, we'll it's talk a, full a little time? bit. Yeah. Well, just just what has that journey been like? From like you gave your life to Jesus. Okay. To like, now you're in full time ministry. Yeah. Um, not so much like how did okay. you all of a sudden get to this full time space, okay. but like tell me about the journey from like giving your life to Jesus just to like that going. Absolutely. Like, like you, you decide I'm just gonna practice what we preach. Absolutely. Um, so I gave my life to Jesus basically in prison, um, and from there I just, you know, I was I was born again and. I just all of a sudden had this hunger um, to go after the Lord. And so I would read my Bible, literally. I, I read it. I, I had this thing, and I believe it was looking back. You know, I was young in the faith, so I didn't really know like what like being led by the Holy Spirit meant. Right? Yeah. I didn't even know about the Holy Spirit yet. Um, but looking back, I believe the Holy Spirit led me to do this. But every, every meal, I would... I, I told myself, if I'm going to feed myself physically, I want to feed myself spiritually. Hmm. So every meal, I would, um, either before or after, I would read the Bible. Yeah. And I would read, like, like whole whole letters of, like, Paul. Like, I started, you know, I would read, like, Galatians. That's short ones. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd read, like, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. And, like, I was doing that on, like, a daily basis. Yeah. And, um, and I just began to grow in the Lord tremendously. It, it, it transformed my life. It was transform, transformed the way I thought, transformed the way I acted, um, transformed the way I prayed, how I prayed, what I prayed for. And so I did that for prob. I mean, that was when I was in jail. And then I went to prison. And then when I went to prison, we had a, a whole lot of Christian services. It was like it was like paradise for growing in your faith. Like yeah. We had like 11 services a week. <laughs> and I went to every one of them. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was that hungry. Yeah. Like right, for God. And so I just began to grow just seeking after him. Seeking him alone. And I, I think that is the answer for our entire Christian life. Even today, um, the transition that I'm in now, what has led to that is... Putting God, keeping God first and, and foremost, my my ultimate affection and priority. And I think we get away from that, you know, especially in either in seeking to get into ministry or when we get into ministry, sometimes we we put that maybe not intention definitely not intentionally, but we kind of put our intimacy and affection with him on on the back burner. We put ministry first, we put what I can do for him or what God wants me to do for him. Um, first and and we and we begin to drift away from actually like just hungering and thirsting for for him and for his presence and and for knowing him but that's how it started for me and then um, I just began to to serve any way yeah. I could I just wanted to it was just a desire on my yeah. heart and you know I believe that you know the more and more we seek Christ the more and more we become like Christ and Christ was a servant so 
like I said, I, I believe that's the answer first. And then, you know, I just began to serve and um, look for ways I can serve. I began to pray and ask God. This is kind of like where, where it really started transition. I was like, God, I, you know, I want to be used by you more. And, uh, and I'll never forget, I prayed that prayer. And then probably like a day or two later, I was friends with the chaplain, chaplain assistant. I actually ended up becoming a chaplain assistant while I was in prison. Yeah. And um, he was like, hey, what do you think about preaching a Sunday? And I was like, wow. Uh, and then, but immediately I remember my prayer, like God used me more. And I was like, did the Lord tell you that? And so yeah. <laughs> it was just a cool, cool and, uh, you know, transition time. And, and I ended up preaching my first, my first sermon. And, um, it wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't good at all. If I could go back and listen yeah. to the things that I've said. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but it, it sparked something. Yeah. And then sh I think it was shortly after that is where I was spending time with the Lord, um, doing my, my morning devotionals. I used to do, um, my, like five different, I used to follow devotionals, like the, uh, upper room and stuff like that. And I had like five of them <laughs> and I was going through them and, um, and I heard the Lord say to me, not audibly, but, you know, close enough where he said, I've called you to preach the gospel to the nations. Yeah. And from that moment, um, I knew that was what I was called to do. And I just, every opportunity God opened, I would step into. And, yeah. um, you know, ultimately it's led me to, to where I am today. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so good. So what, what do you say to the person who is, they're listening um, they're, they're in our church and another church, but they've just yet to go from like attending and, and listening to the messages to like mm. being on mission. Um, what, what, what is the message that you want them to hear from you today? Okay. And may, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe they're, they're called to be an evangelist. Maybe they're called to be a yeah. pastor. Maybe yeah. they're called to be a missionary, yeah. you know, like, like whatever it is that God's calling them to do next. Um, what, mm -hmm. what is that? Well, I would start. I would start by, I would start by asking a question, and I would ask, "Do you know what God has called you to do?" And follow up with that, I would say, "All of us have a call in our life. We all have a purpose. We all have something that we are uniquely created for." And you know, even if Alex was an evangelist and I'm an evangelist, like it doesn't. It's not going to look the same. Like there's a unique call on your life. Um, and a specific call on your life. And, it, you know, it could be evangelist. It could be a stay-at-home mom. Like, it could range. But wherever God has called you to, you know, to be, um, He wants you to know. And He wants you to, to do it under with His power and anointing. You know, and if it's, you know, if it's raising up kids, you know, orphans or, or you know, being a foster parent or something. Like, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be, you know, within the five-fold ministry. But... Uh, my question would be, do you know what God has called you to do? If not, I would say, don't just seek Him for the for the call, but I, just seek Him for who He is with your whole heart. And because I really, I really believe, and uh, might step on some people's toes, but I really believe um, when we when we aren't walking in what God has called us to do, it has a lot to do with our lack of intimacy with Him, with our lack of of really spending time with Him and being with Him and, and really yielding to Him and giving Him our whole heart. And because just from my experience, and I don't know if you have, you know, agree or disagree, but um, when I'm spending time with Him, things are, when I put Him first, things are so clear. Like, it, things just begin to make sense and things just begin to, to happen and you just begin to, to, like I said, you grow as you go. And, um, so I would, I would start there. Yeah. I would say where, you know, where's your, where's your relationship with Christ at? Um, and just start with there. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I totally yeah. agree. It's, it's a, hard to, to like it's get a simple to know. answer, but, but to, like the more you get to know Jesus, the more you find things that Jesus cares about. Yeah. And yeah. then the more, the more like, I think certain things you find are, are more like dominant mm -hmm. passions, yeah. concerns. And, and that's an indicator of like start by by like seeing where you can just serve yeah, in an area absolutely. that already is 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 working at those areas. Yeah, because you know, the scripture says he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, it could go two ways. 
I believe primarily it, it goes with him giving you the desires of your heart. Like desires that you have that you wouldn't have in the flesh, that you wouldn't have on your own. Like I'm not talking about desires like a new house, a new car, or you know, any type of earthly desires. But a desire to do something for him, right? So I had this situation, um, it was some years back, where the Lord the Lord was telling me to do something. And I, I received so much resistance from the people around me telling me, no, don't do it, it's not safe, this, that, and the other. It was crazy. It was like some serious spiritual warfare. <laughs> and... Uh, but I talked to one of my friends, and he he said something to me that I'll never forget. It's just stuck, and it made so much sense in that moment. He asked me, he said, would you want to do this if you weren't saved? And I was like, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. It, it was like, would, like, would you want to do this in your flesh? And I was like, no. No, I wouldn't. I don't want to yeah. do it in my flesh. And he was like, that's a good indication that it's God. And I was just like, wow, because my, my, when I, when I, when God told me what he was like, what to do immediately, I knew he, I knew it was him. Um, but in my flesh, it like, it wasn't anything that I would have wanted to do. It yeah. was, so this is what it was. So when the Baltimore riots happened, I think in 2015, yep. um, I was at work and I was just praying and, uh, and all of a sudden, the presence of God just hit me so strong, and and the desire in my heart so strong to go to Baltimore. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I didn't know, like I just, I just knew like I had to go. Yeah. I ended up being disobedient, so learn from my mistake because I listened to the voices of those around me. But I began to tell, you know, my wife. Uh, I'm not throwing her under the bus. She'll acknowledge this. She's very much on board on your team. She's now, on my team as you now. Go but, and travel but, and share the gospel. Yeah, but then she was young in her faith, and she was not having it. She was like, "No, no, no." And then other friends were like, "Like, no, no. You have to be like, you have to listen to your wife." And I was like, "Hold on, <laughs> hold on." Yeah. And there were anyway. Yeah. Uh, we, we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I ended up not not going. And you're seeing. And I regret it to this day. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, but I knew God was telling me to go. Yeah, and uh, that is kind of like a, a prime example of like the desire came to me, and um, and it wasn't something that I would have wanted to do in my in my own because I mean, I mean I've never been a like a fearful person, but yeah. riots in Baltimore. I don't know the area like. You yeah, know, yeah. I would have probably had to take off work the next day. <laughs> I I find the the. The idea of grace is so much more attractive in moments like this, mm -hmm. where it's like grace when all of a sudden you realize, like, man, I missed God on that, like, or or I messed up over here. But like, mm -hmm. you know, now it's now it's a learning opportunity, it's a learning yeah. lesson. <laughs> yeah. And for me, those moments were like, I because I've had those too. Yeah. You know, where where all of a sudden, like, I I realized like that was God speaking to me, and I missed it. But I feel like now I've I've learned better how to recognize His Absolutely. voice, so that next time. When I hear his voice, I will go. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and Absolutely. to me, then it's like, well, that's what grace is for. Yeah. You know, just one example. Yeah. Um, and it's like, yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a learning. Because the same thing happened with El Salvador. Yeah. And so, um, and doors are opening up for that, but um, i got to be obedient. Yeah. And yeah. Now, now, since the, it happened like the same, almost the same exact way, too. Yeah. And so, like, now I know, I'm like, Okay, I got, I gotta go. Right, you know. So no, absolutely. So, <laughs> um, hey, listen. If you guys want to get in touch with Matt, you want to learn more about what he's doing, you have questions for him, Matt. How do we get in touch with you? How do we follow along? Um, I am in the process of building the five hundred one c three, starting it, getting a website, um, social media, all of, yeah, all of that, yeah. um, so all that other stuff that happens that. in the week outside of the evangelism. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so right now, currently, you yeah. can email me at uh, m meadows m m e a d o w s at r o l v a dot org. You can search me on Facebook, uh, Matthew Meadows. Um, I do have a ministerial page. I'll be honest with you. I'm not the greatest with social media, but that is Matthew 
uh, A Meadows, I believe it is, or Osby Meadows. That's my little name. Yeah, Osby is so cool. Yeah. I use that it, all the time. The reason I use it is because it's so distinct. Yeah. Like, nobody else will have that name I, on I social mean, media. I mean, I feel like with that kind of middle name, you're going to one day be with, like, your, you know, Spurgeon. Or Lu- <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. Like, it's just like there's yeah. this, there was this I, man named Matthew Osby. Man. I should start using it just because just it'll be easy to find. That's true. I should. Yeah. But uh, my Instagram is, is Matthew A. Meadows. Okay. Um, so you can find me on those places. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. Cool. As man. I'm building, yeah. I'm building that up. So. Yeah, man. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, thank you. Hey, thank go you, run after Jesus. Live on mission. And um, yeah, love you all. See love you next you guys. time. That's fun. Cool. That's it. <laughs>